The tragic story of Oceangate's Titan submersible is well known. This small diving vessel was designed to explore the wreckage of the Titanic, located 3,800 meters beneath the sea. But how did the submersible and its systems function? Let's take a closer look. The Titan had various intriguing systems, such as propulsion, communication, and an underwater dissolving mechanism. However, not all of these systems worked as intended, leading to the vessel's tragic fate. The Titan submersible was designed to reach depths of up to 4,000 meters, where the pressure is equivalent to an enormous weight. To put it in perspective, it's like an elephant standing on one leg with 226 more elephants piling on top. Deep sea exploration poses immense challenges due to the intense pressure, darkness, and communication difficulties with the surface. The entire system weighed approximately 10 tons and consisted mainly of a few core components. The largest component was the carbon fiber hull, which tragically failed and resulted in the loss of all lives on board. The hull, 5 inches thick, could not withstand repeated exposure to high pressures and imploded during the seventh dive to the Titanic. To illustrate this effect, here's a demonstration of a railroad tank imploding under a vacuum due to the difference in pressure. The implosion of the Titan would have likely occurred even faster. This raises the question of what measures were in place to prevent such a catastrophe. The first way to prevent failures like this is to create a virtual model of the submersible and test its limits. However, carbon fiber is notoriously hard to model because it is not one single block of material. It is instead lots of thin fibers that are interwoven and cured together. This also means there are many ways it can weaken as layers shift and come apart from one another without any destructive testing to fully test the limits of the Titan. These models were just not enough. This is where the second system was meant to come in. Aboard the Titan, there was a real-time acoustic monitoring system which OceanGate claimed could detect buckling of the carbon fiber hull prior to a catastrophic failure, according to a patent held by OceanGate CEO Richard Stockton Rush. This used multiple small sensors, such as ultrasonic microphones and string gauges to monitor vibrations in the carbon fiber. This data would have been collected at regular intervals and sent to a centralized system for storage and analysis. At this point, it should have been able to assess the health of the internal and external structure and predict failure conditions. However, this type of testing is a relatively new field and clearly wasn't enough in hindsight. In fact, an open letter from the Marine Technology Society said they had concerns the Titan design could result in catastrophic negative outcomes. Not only was the use of carbon fiber concerning, but so was the tubular shape, which is much worse than a sphere distributing the pressure from the weight of the ocean. Next, we have the end caps of the Titan, which were made from titanium and secured onto the main hull using 18 bolts, giving passengers no way to get out from inside. The viewing window was also reportedly made from a material that was only certified down to 1300 meters, just a third the depth of the Titanic. These components were all tested together on a one-third model in collaboration with the University of Washington, at which point an ex-employee could. David Lockridge expressed concerns that the scale model of the sub had revealed flaws in the carbon fiber under pressure testing. But aside from the fatally designed hull, how did the Titan submersible actually operate or know where it was going? After an initial briefing, the first step of a Titan launch was to deploy the docking station from the main ship. This is why the Titan was actually classified as a submersible rather than a submarine, because a submarine is able to leave and come back to port under its own power. The docking station initiates its descent by filling its ballast tanks with seawater, which increases its weight and causes it to plunge 9 meters underwater. Simultaneously, the Titan detaches from the docking station and begins its descent while the docking station refills its tanks with air, allowing it to float back to the surface. This process is reversed at the end of the voyage when the Titan is ready to resurface. The Titan is a carefully balanced submersible designed not to float or sink unless its electric thrusters are activated. It is equipped with four interspace electric thrusters that provide propulsion in various directions, including up, down, forward, backward, and rotation. These thrusters are specifically designed for efficient operation in both forward and reverse movements. To power these motors, the Titan rallies on an onboard battery system similar to those used in electric cars. The control mechanism of the submersible has garnered significant media attention, with particular focus on the use of a game controller to direct the vessel. Surprisingly, game controllers are not only used in this context but also find common applications in military settings due to their user-friendly nature, durability, and accessibility. They are employed worldwide to control a wide range of devices, us, including explosive disposal robots in advanced submarines like the Virginia class. In addition to the game controller, 
The Titan features touchscreen displays that provide visuals from external cameras and receive text messages from the main ship on the surface. However, achieving clear visuals in the dark depths of the ocean is a challenging task. To overcome this, the Titan is equipped with a powerful external lighting system, boasting an impressive 40,000 lumens, which is approximately 40 times brighter than a typical car headlight. Communication and tracking for the Titan are accomplished through an ultra-short baseline acoustic system. This system utilizes acoustic pulses, similar to Morse code, to transmit messages. During previous voyages, this acoustic system directed the Titan to the wreckage of the Titanic since the submersible does not possess its own navigation system. To ensure the surface ship knows the Titan's precise location, an acoustic positioning system comes into play. The surface ship emits an audio frequency from a transducer, and upon receiving the signal through its transponder, the Titan responds with a similar signal. By measuring the time taken for the signal to reach the surface ship, along with multiple transducers for directional determination, the surface ship can accurately determine the Titan's location and send messages to guide it towards the Titanic wreck. Given the tragic outcome of the last Titan voyage, there is an understandable focus on safety systems. While some corners may have been cut during the hull's design, several safety measures were implemented to aid passengers in different emergency scenarios. The primary objective in any emergency situation where the passengers remain alive, such as a power outage or loss of communication, would be to resurface. However, in the event of a fire, additional measures are necessary. Therefore, the Titan is equipped with a fire extinguisher and smoke masks for all passengers, prioritizing the safety of resurfacing. To facilitate resurfacing, the Titan incorporates seven systems designed to help it reach the surface. These systems include electric thrusters for propulsion, inflation of an air balloon, and the release of lead weights. Notably, one of these systems functions as a dead man switch designed to activate even if everyone on board loses consciousness. This dead man switch employs a material that dissolves upon contact with salt water. After approximately 10 hours of diving, the material completely dissolves, releasing sandbags from the sub's bottom. By reducing the sub's weight, the system ensures buoyancy and prevents it from floating towards the surface uncontrollably. This tragedy really shows that the ocean must be respected during all projects within it. From energy to exploration, from all of this that you learned something new and found this video interesting. If you did, I'd really appreciate you subscribing to my channel. As you probably like some of the other videos I make like this one about a new micro-hydro turbine.